Hi, everyone. It is February 28th, the end of February. Now we head into March. Well, check out what Texas is now doing. The state will deploy more than 1,100 National Guard across the state to help communities vaccinate homebound seniors. Some National Guard will be involved in the identification and registration of the seniors in the community to get them on the list to be able to get the vaccine. Other National Guard will be involved in the vaccination process. This effort begins this coming week. The state will deploy more than 1,100 National Guard across the state. It is Operation Warp Speed. Great. Well, I posted this video on my second backup channel. I don't know how long ago, a week ago, 10 days ago. For Amanda Eubanks and her mom Sharon, seeing their Katie home covered in snow. Just like a white Christmas out here. Was at first a nice surprise, but very quickly. I went from being so excited I made a snowman to the next day my house was destroyed. Became a nightmare. To come in there and see it destroyed, just, I can't even put it into words. <laughs> the mother and daughter spent Monday night at home freezing without power, and the next night went to a friend's house that had heat. Within four hours, uh, the power went out. The next morning, they came home to this. I didn't know where it was coming from. We didn't know how to stop it. We didn't know what, what, to, what to do. It, a pipe burst inside their attic. Water poured from it for hours, causing the ceiling to crash down on the bedroom below. Because it just made me just feel like everything is ruined and we might not have anywhere to live. The two, helpless in their own home. So I don't know where we go, really. I have no idea. Now trying to move past. Just do whatever it takes to get everything back in order again. We've been trying to fix it ourselves and if there's anybody out there that can help us, we appreciate it. We're not asking for money. We just want hands. One of the work. So I was trying to see if there was a follow up. And I can't find any. A whole lot of people were well touched by this. You called on God and he answered with this news interview. Someone is going to help. Just hang on tight. God is sending angels to help you and your family get through this. How do, how do people know that that is actually the case? God works through people. God works through people. I posted it asking if anybody was in Katy or the surrounding area. If they could contact the news station to help these people. I don't know if anybody did. I don't know. I can't find any follow-up. You know, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez raises $5 million for in, in literally, I think, two days. First day raised $3.2 million, all of which, she said, will go to relief groups across the state. What relief groups? Houston Food Bank, Family Elder Care, Feeding Texas, the Bridge Homeless Recovery Center, Corazon Ministries, North Texas Food Bank, Food Bank of the Rio Grande Valley, Ending Community Homelessness Coalition and Central Texas Food Bank. Well, certainly the food banks need it. You know, why can't anybody give directly to the people who are in need? I so wish that I could just start a simple website to take in donations for people who need help. Why can't people just give 
to those who are in need of help, give it to them directly. Because, now, and I don't know any of these organizations, but the problem is you give to organizations and a whole lot of people end up taking some of that money um, so uh, tens of thousands in Texas are facing what this mother and daughter are facing. And there's a whole lot of people who do not get assistance. So let's move on. The mess in Texas. Freeze leaves, huge electric bills, burst pipes, and water danger for 10 million people. The pandemic left people without an income. Small businesses have had to close their doors. What happens? What happens to all of these people? You know, the, uh, it, it, it's horrifying to see how boldly and proudly cruel are people in this country. And look, I never had the impression that a lot of Americans have had about Americans, that they are morally superior, that they are exceptional, that they're caring and compassionate. I just didn't see it. So maybe all of the stress now that Americans are experiencing, watching, watching, yeah, their empire collapse, maybe that stress is bringing out the true colors. This guy makes me sick. Host of the Young Turks. Only upside of Texas power outages is people like Joe Rogan, who were so proud to leave California and move to Texas, freezing their asses off. They said they wanted less government. Congrats, mission accomplished. I hope you're not asking government to come help you. There was a Zero Hedge article, and I, I believe the title was, Where is the Compassion? I bookmarked that. All of these tweets, how cruel Americans were. Now, because Texas is a red state, Texas doesn't go along with the climate change. Oh, the climate change lie. That's enough to get this video taken down. That's where we are today. Free America. You can't even speak freely. Well, I went to my bookmarks and I clicked on that zero hedge and it was a 404 error. Gone. I, that was rather surprising. Maybe um, the powers that be didn't want the left to be seen in such a cruel light. And they are quite cruel. The, the horror of what happened in Texas. Look at this car wash. That is water flowing down, freezing immediately. Uh, I guess the left just does not believe in weather modification. Oh, it's so easy you know, to do the research, but I guess they just don't want to. Well, 
This is a disaster that, based on my research, it trumps in terms of money, the amount of damage. It's going to come in as the number one most costly disaster. And there's a whole lot of people that won't get the help they need. But if we were such an exceptional, morally superior, Christian, uh, uh, caring, compassionate people, we wouldn't have the problems that we do. We wouldn't have so many homeless people. We wouldn't have so many people in need and they don't know where to turn for help. Stephen King Hey, Texas, keep voting for officials who don't believe in climate change and supported privatization of the power grid. Maybe in four years you can vote for Trump again. He believes in the latter, but not the former. Perfect. Hey, Stephen, you've got a shitload of money. How about you not writing your snarky little tweets and get out there and help your fellow Americans? How about that, Stephen? Chuck Schumer rips Texas for ignoring climate change. Huh. Well, just like everything, just like everything, coronavirus, climate change, all of these agendas, you say something that well, it goes against the official narrative, then you're a conspiracy theorist, and you, uh, well, you get deleted, disappeared, put down the memory hole. Spent 10 years, just me alone, but wow, so many others out there trying to wake up Americans to the fact that man is controlling weather. And if man is controlling weather, think about that climate change. Is it really natural, organic? Texas thought it could go it alone and built a system that ignored climate change. Texas has a whole lot of wind farms. So what happened? It was not what's called resilient, and now Texas is paying the price. I hope they learned a lesson. Hey, Chucky, you certainly have stolen an, a shitload of money from Americans. How about you helping directly some of your fellow Americans? Right, fellow Americans. Oh, huh. <laughs> What a concept. Texans? Californians? No, fellow Americans, right? And your fellow Americans are in need, Chucky. I can't stand these people. They make me sick. Wildfire aftermath in Phoenix, Oregon. Talent, Oregon. Remember the fires. This woman lost her home and two dogs. Phoenix, um, Oregon. Actually, let me just, I, I forgot, Stephen and uh, Scent and, you know, all of these people. Huh. Um, how would you like it if Texans tweeted out horrible Horrible tweets for all the Californians who've lost their homes, 
Oh, that's right. And you, California, are the big climate change policy voters. I guess natural disasters, quote unquote, happen everywhere. Whether you're voting for the climate change pushers or not, doesn't matter. Whether you want less government or more government, it doesn't matter. But the fact is, is that the policies in our country, whether there has been a majority of whatever party in Congress and whoever is in the White House, blue or red, the policies have destroyed Americans leaving them with little money to become resilient after these disasters, wherever they are. Whether it's California or Texas, New York or wherever. These people are sick. I'm sorry. There's something so wrong, so wrong with the majority of Americans. You know, do you know how many elderly have lost their homes and have nothing, no resources, no resources to recover? How many elderly have had their water pipes burst in Texas? But it wasn't just Texas. Oregon also, their ice storm. (sighs) Millions face cleanup costs, need disaster relief after Texas winter storms. Costs are climbing for many Texans. Hotel stay expenses. You know, it's only greed that allows people to charge like enormous you know, prices when they know their fellow Americans are really hurting. That, that, it's, look, <laughs> we are so not morally superior at all. And I was reading this, you know, tweet, Susan Sarandon, So now it's uh, Biden and many that used to be on the left are not so on the left anymore coming out, you know, against uh, the party that, and uh, I'm also speaking for myself, uh, loyal to the Democrats. Yes, the Democrats really care about people and, oh, they're just so wonderful Well, many are finding out, thank God, that they ain't so wonderful. And they're just as corrupt as the other party. Oh, wait, there's not another party. It's one party, a one-party system. But Susan Sarandon uh, promised checks right away, talking about Biden, or the $15 minimum wage, or canceling student debt, He could do those things immediately and legally, uh, legally with an executive order. Susan, Susan, these executive orders have allowed each president to reveal they are kings. They are dictators. What, Biden comes in and signs, what, 50 executive orders in his first 30 days? (laughs) And they're such unbelievable hypocrites because Biden It was only last year. He was claiming that Trump was a dictator, acting like a dictator because he's signing executive orders. And then, uh, God, you know, the the, the abject just craziness in this country, it truly, wow, man, it is making me sick. But you're right, Susan, people are starving and dying and homeless. 
and they will remember broken promises next time, if they survive, if they don't die. Oh, and if they get something to eat, and perhaps maybe if they get a home. Well, we have more and more of this starving, dying, homelessness, and people left alone, nowhere to turn. And Susan, you've got a shitload of money as well. Are you helping people? Are you helping people? I'm not going to make any presumption. Maybe you are. But Susan, let us know, please. Because those who do help people, it's not about an ego thing. Please let us know so that others might get inspired by your actions, or at least you can be a power of example for all of the Americans who sit back and do squat. Because that's what's really killing us. He all of a sudden started hearing stuff like busting around, and then there was just water everywhere. It was falling in on top of us through the bathroom, through the living room, through the dining room, through the bedroom upstairs. It just collapsed and fell all over the bed. And She's tried getting help. The supplies, we don't have the people or the supplies to fix it. But had no luck until she applied through FEMA. All of a sudden, they were there. Before I know it, they were calling to come and help me to clean up the mess that I, I can't do myself. As a nonprofit collaboration of local churches, the restoration team just helping uh, neighbors try to piece things back together has helped muck 16 homes in the last five days. Right now, the restoration team is focused on uh, cleanup uh, and drying out, just trying to get things to where it's clean and at least uh, sanitary while they wait out for FEMA assistance or insurance. And for Thomas, finally having this help means the world. So it's overwhelming to see that this many people took a day off from their Saturday that they could be enjoying with their family to come help me. And it just feels so good. I feel so loved right now. And he's... And I love it when this happens. I love it when this happens. Neighbors helping neighbors and doing the right thing. This is the right thing. This is the right thing. We need more of it. We need more of it. We need more of it. They woke me up this morning saying that we were flooded. You know, this is a lot. Marie Wilbanks feels forgotten. And I was just sitting in there just a minute ago. I'm thinking, how can I get the rest of it out? She's been without power for more than 24 hours. And this morning, a burst pipe flooded her apartment where she's been taking care of her granddaughter and great granddaughter. I try so hard to give her and her baby a, a good place to live. And now all of this. Across Texas, pipes have frozen, burst, and flooded homes. All are asking the same question. Why me? Why me? <clears throat> Why me? Hmm. Texans are hurting. I've tried to get in touch with Encore. I've tried to get in touch with my electric company. Nobody will answer. As the cold ends, many will need help facing a new fight. And I'm like, one more battle, but I can make it because I've been through so many. In Fort Worth, I'm William Joy. I can make it. If life came with an alarm, it would sound on Tuesday for Kathy Sowles. It's a lot of water, too much water. She spent the day clearing the water from her Villa Creek apartment in Dallas. It's too much. Her world has come crashing, and you'd be mad too. I could have lost my life laying here in this bed a while ago. Just after 11, her roof caved in. It flooded the bedroom, everything she has. This is all I got. And before any of this, she lost power in the winter storm and again during our interview. I lose my power. We lost our power. I'm losing power now. It's gone. Been rough, man. Cold. No heat in single-digit temperatures. Nothing to eat. Many of us have been here, but not like this. In a pandemic, in a blizzard, when the world comes crashing. Lost everything in my house. 
No, I'm not okay, because I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to really hurt me. This is not a sob story. Feel bad for her story. I'm just all messed up in my head right now. This is what real people are dealing with. I would have never thought this would have happened to me. I just moved down here. Been down here three months. Ooh, stuff still falling. Sadly, the stuff continues to fall. This is her mother. She just passed obituary. She got wet. Because losing her mom to cancer three weeks ago wasn't enough. <sighs> oh, Lord. Oh, you, this is really hurting me. My eyes like this. Kathy will stay with family for now, but it's a very short-term fix. She's waiting on dozens of phone calls back. And right about now, it's the only ring she can stomach. In Dallas, I'm Jogan Paniker. I can't stand this. I can't stand this. I can't stand it. How many people are being so destroyed? How about Oregon? Fire survivors speak before Oregon legislator, legislature. Um, FEMA denied most Oregonians' requests for wildfire disaster assistance. This happens over and over and over. With every disaster, most people get denied. More than 24,000 Oregonians applied for disaster assistance. After the 2020 wildfires, 57% were denied. Maria Monier, <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name, lived in Medford for almost a decade. She owned a manufactured home at Medford Estates, once a gated, manicured mobile home park with cleanly paved streets, sturdy homes, bright green lawns, until September 8. The Almeida Fire in Jackson County destroyed 2,500 homes. That's just one county. You are not eligible for housing assistance because you did not prove you lived in the damaged home at the time of the disaster. What? Uh, she read the letter she got from FEMA. I've been there since August 2012. Who's been paying the rent? Who's been paying mortgage and property taxes? 290 people in Oregon appealed FEMA's denials. Only 40 were approved and Maria wasn't among the approved. Okay, she wants to go back home. She wants to live in the same park, same plot, in a similar house. Park is leasing plots on a first-come, first-served basis without prioritizing previous tenants. New tenants will need to buy a home among a selection of designs provided by the park and prices are going to be tens of thousands of dollars more than what everybody paid for years ago. She owned her previous home outright. It was easier to afford the monthly mortgage payments years ago She guesses that she'll need 30000 to move back to the park. She's not sure what she'll do if she doesn't make up that shortfall. This is just one of so many Americans facing the same thing. So the high rate of denial from FEMA, it's on par with previous disasters. FEMA denied 60% of Puerto Rican disaster assistant, assistance applicants, Hurricane Maria, Texas Housers, Hoosers, a, a, a housing nonprofit, found that FEMA denied a quarter of disasters, Harvey. Many of the people who have been denied assistance are low income. 
but not all. They do deny people. But it's those who have resources that can fight the denials and do the appeals. Those lacking the resources usually just give up the fight. They can't do it. So, uh, so this is what's happening in Oregon. People told lawmakers in Oregon's House Special Committee on Wildfire Recovery their personal stories for almost four and a half hours. The purpose? So the state can determine how best to help people still dealing with the aftermath of the fires. This video um, was recorded by my fiance's friend as we were uh, driving out. My truck was just so hot, I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to get out of here. Marion County Commissioner Kevin Cameron, along with many others who live in the Santiam Canyon, were first in line Monday night to talk about their experiences and struggles. One big complaint that kept coming up, FEMA, and applications for help getting denied. There's been no housing options really offered. There's been no help from FEMA. The, the federal government isn't there to really step in. They're promising us one thing, they say one thing, and then uh, it's coming down to, oh, where's this documentation that they already had? People also say during the fire, there wasn't adequate warning to get out. Would they need to look at the warning systems that are in place to warn people? This could have cost a lot of lives. The Forest Service hadn't told anybody to leave. They had never sounded any alarms or anything. They left it up to us people in Detroit to figure out to get out of there. And people wondered why the fires weren't extinguished sooner. Why didn't they put stomp those fires out when they were small? I was watching for the planes to come, and they didn't come. I think we're going to have to hold a whole separate hearing on why the Forest Service didn't put out the fire sooner. People from the Mackenzie River Valley, Clackamas County, and Lincoln County on the coast also spoke. Some said access to information was an issue that needs to be fixed, and many are still trying to rebuild. I said I've gotten help from no one to do this. No, for, no help from FEMA, no help from all these different agencies because it's so confusing. Who helps who? Meantime, back in the Santiam Canyon. You know, a lot of people in the canyon were, were, were kind of getting in that anger stage where we're like, why doesn't Detroit have water? We're going to be six months mark in two weeks and Detroit doesn't even have running water. Where's the government assistance for that? We need more action and less talk. I don't want to see Detroit stop. And it's headed that way if we don't get help. On Wednesday night, elected officials will get a chance to speak to the committee. Yeah. Then enough, enough, enough. Government is not there to help you. You think it is, but it's not. And to all of those who leave comments not caring at all because you think people have insurance, well, you have no idea. You have no clue that people can't even rebuild. FEMA won't let us rebuild our home. Sacramento family, screwed by federal bureaucrats. This was 2013. It's only gotten worse. New data. This is August 2019. Why? 800,000 applicants were denied federal disaster assistance loans. 800,000. People just give up. Low-income hurricane victims slam federal relief programs. I've heard from subscribers who have experienced disasters. They've told me their experiences with FEMA, their insurance companies, they go through an incredibly traumatic experience. And then they're literally subjected to trauma over and over and over again, playing the game, trying to get help. FEMA denies most. The, the first application, denied, for the most insane reasons. Like that woman, her home, she's lived there, she's paid the mortgage, the payment, everything. 
the rent for the um, the plot where her mobile home was, and they say she didn't provide documentation to show that she lived there when the disaster hit. <sighs> Here, four hours and 27 minutes, if you want to listen to all of these people talk about their experience during and after the fires last year in Oregon. I will link to this below. But we need to change. We need to change. This is such a heartbreaking six minutes. Let me just play the first few minutes. I will link to it below. You can watch the whole six minutes. But we've got people who literally have nowhere to turn. The elderly. Do we not have a responsibility to help one another? Of course we do. The wildfires have left a trail of death and damage over the past few years. One more casualty, it turns out, has been the senior citizens whose houses in a mobile home park survived but remain uninhabitable. Our story comes from two students from the University of California Berkeley's Graduate School of Journalism, Carla Caraballo Torres and Lauren Eleni Gill, who narrates this report. At the north edge of Santa Rosa city limits, you'll find a barren lot marked by charred stumps and an empty pool. It's what is left of Journey's End Mobile Home Park, still desolate after the Tubbs fire struck in 2017. Still standing are 44 houses that survived, but they are empty. No one is allowed to live there. The fire devoured more than 100 homes, but oddly enough, the folks whose houses remain say they wish they had burned too. 84-year-old Teresa Udall's home was unscathed by flames, but like her neighbors, she can't move back. I put all my savings into that house and paid for it outright. So it kind of ticks me off that, you know, it's being held in hostage. The fire destroyed the electric, gas, and water systems that supported the homes. Former residents with homes still standing aren't allowed to live there, but they've also had trouble getting private and federal insurance funding. Richard Weiner is Deputy Director of Codes and Standards at the California Department of Housing and Community Development. Okay, so this 84-year-old woman, her home, untouched by the fire, can't live in her home. And she's not the only one. This woman as well. So... I can't stand, I cannot stand what has happened to us. You know, I don't think it takes much to change our ways in terms of just really reaching out, helping one another, certainly helping those who are most vulnerable without any resources. Now, how many of you are alone and thinking about your future? I do. Nursing homes, disaster, losing your house, what are you going to do? How many of you are afraid of what the future is going to bring for you because you don't have anyone to turn to? There's an awful lot like that. And it really breaks my heart because this is not the way life 
was supposed to be.